Now, if your email inbox is anything to go by, we're about a week or so into the implementation of the EU's General Data Protection Regulations, or GDPR, as it's more commonly known. So if you're a client of tech titans like Facebook, Google and others, especially here in Africa, yet again, you're being reminded of the glaring absence of any legal data protection for you. So changes to terms and uh, conditions of service on some of these outlets effectively leave users here at the mercy of US law. And that's if, very big if, you can actually get access to it. Now, since most African states clearly are not prioritizing your data security, what then are your options? That's a question I explored a little earlier with Nigeria Sambuli from the World Wide Web Foundation. There's one thing to have a law in effect. There's another thing about how it's actually going to be adhered to and where liabilities lie. And having so they, access to it. And having access to it. So for those of us um, in the European, Middle East, Africa region, usually in this big tech companies, we are considered largely EMEA. Mm. But what has happened now, and I think Facebook is a good example, is they announced that for those who are not within the Europe part of the EMEA, so yep. the Middle East African clients and Asia and uh, elsewhere, that data will basically be stored in American servers where it's liable under American law, which has a whole different interpretation of privacy mm -hmm. and how these um, uh, rules and uh, rights that have been, personal data rights that have been enforced for the GDPR would apply. So essentially we're in a wild west where, as somebody said, the best you can hope for sometimes is just to make necessary noise and hopefully somebody will, and there'll be communal will outrage or something. And there's, there's something also interesting about it because the one common thread across all of these is that they actually prohibit class action suits. So mm -hmm. it be a case of say Nigeria's privacy rights were violated I go into a court in the US and sue right. on behalf of everyone else right. a lot of these force people into arbitration but I mean isn't this essentially a raw deal of sorts because it's essentially a take it or leave it option there's no middle ground for a lot of Middle East African users well and that's where the question about what happens within our jurisdictions come in because what, uh, the, what will happen with Europe is going to be very interesting to watch. Already there are cases, class actions that have been filed against Facebook and I believe Google. Yeah. Um, and these are class action suits. So the spirit of how this law is interpreted is going to be very important in terms of jurisprudence and in terms of how other regions that are considering data protection laws, whether it's at a country level or a regional level, will come into play. Um, in the case of real especially many of us being in the real line of harms based on how much our data is collected. Mm -hmm. There are cases you hear a whole, for instance, in Kenya right now we're dealing with this whole, it should be a scandal, but isn't, that mm -hmm. the Electoral Commission and the data they have about us is so easily traceable, is so easily uh, uh, retrievable by anybody. Yeah. Um, and that's a, a lot of uh, data, for instance, biometrics, which you cannot um, you know, change. So if I hack your account, you can change your password. Mm -hmm. But if I hack some database that has your fingerprints, these are not things we can replace uh, the way you would a password. Mm -hmm. These are the things we need to get people to start understanding how serious they are. But how, how why is it that? To get us thinking about this stuff. Why is it that across Sub-Saharan Africa, because we've seen this explosion in internet access and mobile access right. over the last decade, but data laws simply have not kept up. Is, is What's going on there? What explains that contrast? One, there's always the argument slash justification that the law is always behind when it comes to innovation, mm -hmm. uh, which is not untrue. But I think here we're dealing, we're contending with another number of issues. How uh, rights have been um, adhered to and, and actually respected in the law, in practice, how companies engage with us outside of the internet domain. Mm. Uh, historically, how have our rights been upheld beyond right. being existing in constitutions and laws and provisions and so on and so forth. And is even the idea of a right to privacy. Absolutely. Something that how, exists. What do we actually, exactly, how do we actually conceive that? Mm. Um, one very interesting thing about Europe for comparison is that with different um, countries within the EU, EU their understanding of where they're coming off as a point of departure as far as the GDPR and other provisions as far as online rights go mm. is the historical background. So like in Germany, it's very much informed by what happened, you know, b b building up to World War II mm. and how data was used to actually extract people and target them. Or even the secret police in East Germany, uh, the Stasi. Exactly, and the right. Stasi and so on and so forth. Now, I would hate for it to be that we need to go through that, um, say, in an African country context for us to stick take this stuff seriously. To bring uh, it down to, the, to yeah. the Kenyan case specifically, mm -hmm. is it that we're stuck in a position where most people either A, don't really care about data protection or they're not even aware that they have a right to privacy, or is the argument they're making, look, I mean, it's better for us to have net access and we'll sort out these other things a little later as opposed mm -hmm. to saying, okay, hold up, let's deal with data privacy now mm -hmm. as opposed to kicking that can down the road. All all those elements apply and are all in effect in Kenya, which and I, a number of other territories as well. So you'll find, depending on which 
uh, contingent of people you're dealing with, those are the various concerns they have. So within government, you'll find sometimes the narrative is CQ first, the internet access, and all other concerns shall be dealt with later.